Hang on, everybody. All right, so everybody click on the got it, continue, stuff like that. So thank you for joining us uh, on our Thursday evening. I'm Tammy Klein, and this is our Glen Eagles virtual lecture series. And we're super excited to have Pierre Lucier, and uh, he's from Canada, and uh, he's like the president, the director, the vice president of Earth Day Canada, of IGA. He has done yeah. it all, yeah. and he is just about as passionate as all of the people that we have spoken to in the United States, yeah. Uh, yeah. from the Clio Institute to going green, to even hat quap of the North Face. Uh, you know, we do actually have someone from Aptera in San Diego next week that's gonna talk about solar cars. And we get to, oh. we are introduced to the first solar car that is um, going on, that is being product, that's being produced in the United States. So I think even Glenn Eagles is actually, Mrs. Where are you? Mrs. Cavanaugh and everybody else. We are actually at Glenn Eagles. We are going to have, we're going to start installing some charging stations. Okay. Oh, so we are getting there. We're, um, so we're super excited for that. We're not putting our solar roofs on yet, but hey, you know what? Little by little. And, um, so we've spent the year and a half learning about what the United States is doing and how clean the United States is. And now we get to hear from Canada. We have so many of our residents that we haven't seen. I haven't personally seen since I was started in this position. I have not seen probably any, uh, maybe, I've only seen like 5% of our Canadian friends and they've all been um, in Canada for the last year and a half. So. I have Pierre. I've been work, I've been um, communicating with him probably for the last trying to get him for the last five months to come and talk to us about Canada, and he is the uh, director and vice president of Earth Day Canada, and he is changing the world um, right above us, right on the border. And I am so excited to have him tonight. So everybody, thank you for joining us. And without further further ado, Pierre, it's all about you. Thank you so much, Tammy. As you'll hear, I'm truly Canadian and I'm from Montreal. So I'm French Canadian on top of it. Um, oh. English is my second language. So you will excuse me if sometimes I search for my words, but you'll help me and we'll definitely get to know more about Earth Day Canada and about you. I'm so excited to see you all to kind of a, for me, it's just kind of a, out of this world that I'm connected from, you know, you're in Florida, I'm in Montreal, you want to know about Earth Day Canada. So this is amazing. I've, uh, I'm going to do it simple and maybe, you know, kind of drive through to who we are, who I am, and then go to electric mobility because this is kind of a the subject of tonight i think this is kind of a where we want to head it to this is my this is my endeavor right now i'm working most of my time into building a fast charging network of electric vehicles and i know a lot about this and i can answer all your questions so i'm looking forward to outside of my presentation, uh, engage in a, a discussion with you and answering all your questions on this. So first, everybody knows about Earth Day. Do you know when is Earth Day? In the US, April 22nd. Oh, yeah. Okay, if I had points, I can send you minutes of free charging station if you come to Montreal. <laughs> I think it's Anne. Anne, you're right on it. It's the 22nd of April. And what's funny about this is I'm talking to you about Earth Day in Canada, but it actually started in the US. So actually Earth Day has been, you know, it started in the US and it's a mix of, uh, it was in the uh, peaceful movement of the 1970s 
there's many um, rumors uh, about how it started, why it started. Some involve a, a nuclear test and how we used that was really concerned about the testing of nuclear tests in the desert. But, and most of it, it became when John F. Kennedy he had two kind of main theme about his campaign was education and environment. It's so it's definitely a U.S. organization, a U.S. celebration, but it is uh, now a worldwide celebration. But I wanted to share with you first about who we are and where it's where it started. And I'm going to go like this. It's going to be on my computer and sharing. And I maybe I'll have to go back and forth about not sharing, sharing, and but I'll try to keep it fluid. But this is a special Earth Day, 22nd of April, 1970, because it started in the 70s. And this is an extract of a Walter Conkright special on Earth Day, 1970. So let me do this like this, and this is it. And we and the world, which is our home, live on the brink of nuclear annihilation. We are in a crisis of survival. This is a CBS News special, Earth Day, a question of survival, with CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. A unique day in American history is ending, a day set aside for a nationwide outpouring of mankind seeking its own survival. Earth Day, a day dedicated to enlisting all the citizens of a bountiful country in the common cause of saving life from the deadly byproducts of that bounty, the fouled skies, the filthy waters, the littered earth. As a demonstration, its success was mixed beyond expectations here, far below there. No one now can know exactly how many took part. We do have an idea how many plan participation. Student groups in 2,000 colleges and 10,000 lower schools. Citizen groups in 2,000 communities. By one measurement, Earth Day failed. It did not unite. It did attract that broad cross-section of America its sponsors wanted, not quite. Its demonstrators were predominantly young, predominantly white, predominantly anti-Nixon. Often its protests appeared frivolous its protesters curiously carefree. Yet the gravity of the message of Earth Day still came through. Act or die. We begin our report with Bruce Morton in Denver. Place for Purple Mountain's majesty. So I'll be back here and I'll go and stop this and I'll start again. So, so as you can see, Earth Day 1970, and always as, as a failed Earth Day in 1970, Every day is a failed Earth Day since that day, because if there was, you know, success on the environment uh, aspect of our lives, we would need to be to have an Earth Day. But the funny thing about Earth Day is, especially that Earth Day now in Canada is kind of uh, brought by uh, by Jour de la Terre, Canada, which is a French side, side of it, is we were able to reinvent Earth Day um, in Canada. And it's not just about, so since 1995, I'm in charge of Earth Day in Canada. So I'm the president of Earth Day, used to be the general director of Earth Day, but now we have hired a new general director. She just came in in June. We're about 25 permanent employees. And most of our time, we don't celebrate, we don't spend it on Earth Day, but we build program to fulfill our mission, which is to support organization and individual and people to lower their impact on the environment. So we've built campaign. I'll show you the, the, the 2021 campaign, but we've built programs also. And the programs that we've built at Earth Day Canada this is, the, this is our charitable business model. So instead of like Greenpeace knocking on doors and asking for a donation, we build programs with corporations, cities, individuals, and uh, on topics that range from 
greening your cities, greening your life, low, lower your impact with waste management and um, zero emission mobility, electric mobility. So you'll see, I'm going to share this. This is our campaign from this year. And we do carry a campaign, a yearly campaign, that is um, kind of the message that we want to bring for Earth Day. So let's, let's see. I'm going here, and I'm going to do this. And hopefully, oh, I just played it before, so I'm going to put it back. And here it is. So usually, <laughs> so usually our campaign are more darker, but since the pandemic, we didn't want to bring the burden. They're more kind of a, this is kind of a truly, um, a truly 100% uh, communication campaign. It's a marketing uh, campaign about Earth Day. You need to understand the campaign really easily. Usually it translates into a poster that within three or four seconds, you're going to understand the message. It's funny because you don't know this, but Earth Day was named by one of the famous publicists. I forget his name now, but the famous publicist is, uh, he came up with the name Earth Day. So it, on Earth Day, even in the US and in Canada, the, the strength of the 22nd of April is the communication message. And it's a way to reach a broader audience. We don't preach to the convinced. We preach, and I don't think we preach, I, I don't think we preach, but we show the way to a larger group of the population. And that's how we bring these campaigns to you and to Canadians. But the way we do this, the way we sustain ourselves by doing this is that we create programs. So programs are, as I said, if you go on our website and it's easy, it's earthday.ca and you see this, we have April 22nd. So that's the event. But most of our, we have our program, which we say every day. So these are all the program that we've built. These um, and I'll show you a couple of ones that are key programs, and of course, at the end, I'll show you the electric mobility project that we have. So one of the program that we have is tomorrow's forest, and now it's Quebec, because you have to understand. Before that, Earth Day, I was in charge of Earth Day in Quebec, but now I'm in charge of Earth Day in Canada and in France. So this, pro this program has not been adapted, but it should be LT Canada. So, and this is, uh, we've planted so far 760,000 trees from the year 2007 to 2019. All of these trees are planted based on science, and they're done with many partners. And you, you know, you don't, you don't know this, but the Cowboy Fringant, they're the most known and popular band in Quebec. And these are the David Suzuki Foundation. You may know David Suzuki because you've seen probably him on the, on the TV. So this is one of our program and you can click and donate to plant the trees. We have Gala, we are, you know, the objective is to plant resilient forests, support research and improve Canada's reforestation, to educate the general public, make the inventory of our grove planted. And this is, I must tell you, this is the thing. When you're young and you plant trees, 
you just go, oh, I'm going to plant trees. But when you get a little bit older, yes, you plant trees, but you want to nurture for the trees you've planted. And then at some point when you planted, like me, 700,000 trees, you don't think too much of planting more trees, but you're just trying to make sure that all the trees that you've planted are going to survive because they're going to survive you because when you plant a tree, you plant a tree for the next 250 years. So right now we're much more into not growing the 750,000 trees that we've, that we've planted, but making sure that most of these 750,000 trees survive. We have another project that is, um, I think it's funny because I wanted to show you this. It's, it's part of our thing, but it's something we're doing with Budweiser. So Budweiser, you may not know this. The beer, the Budweiser that you know, has committed to make the beers all around the world out of 100% renewable energy by 2025. So they came to us and this is totally kind of the, that's how it works. Okay. They came and says, well, we have this great idea, Pierre. We want to make a, it's, they made a Earth Day can, a beer. So they, they created this can and this is okay. And we want to give you money to do this. And this is okay. But that's not the way we work at Earth Day Canada. You, we don't accept money for, to support our organization. We accept money because we're going to do something with you because we want to engage you into action. So it says, oh, but let's try to do something interesting with the money that you're going to give, give to us. So we did this switch to renewable and it's about your consumption of energy into your provinces. So it's really uh, particular because if you're a Canadian, when you're a Canadian, especially if you come from Quebec, our 99% of our electricity comes from renewable, from dams that we've built up in the north, and all the electricity comes from renewable. But it's not the same when you're in Ontario, when you're in Manitoba, or when you're in Saskatchewan. And we wanted a website where you can see yourself if, from, if you're from Manitoba, if you're a municipality, a residential, and you can compare yourself, but you can also find ways to lower your impact, switch to renewable. How can I switch to renewable if I'm a, an individual or a municipality or a business? And then generate your own solid complete guide for solar power. So it's all about you and where you live and how you're going to change to renewable. And, and this is done with Budweiser. And, and we could have accepted the money just from Budweiser and just kind of, oh, this is, thank you, Budweiser. But I just wanted to show you that this is not a, how we operate at, uh, at Earth Day. I want to show you something else. This is the main, this day, we have two main program that we're working on for the future of Earth Day in Canada. And the first one is the waste, uh, waste management certification. It's called Action Reduction. And it's about working to reduce and recover waste. And it's about tracking businesses, all kinds of businesses within a territory and to give it's a certification that is a business to client certification. So it's not a, it's not like a, I don't know if you know, um, like a lead, lead for building. Maybe you have had a, you had a, um, a uh, lecture on this, but there's some certification. Most of them are done, a certification are done for uh, business to business. So if you're, if you're building a, a, a condo place, you wanna sell it, you wanna sell it, or let's say offices, 
the government is going to only lease if you have a LEED certification. What, we've, what we're doing here is a certification that is going to, from, that is going to talk from the business to the consumer. And it's an easily understandable certification for the consumer to identify within their community the businesses that are managing their waste as well as they can be. And so the way we work is you have different colors, you have different, uh, you have different, uh, I can, this is it, Action Réduction. I can show it. I want to show it to you. Action Réduction. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm losing myself here. But there is a, we have platinum and everything is, uh, is personalized. So where you can, you can find easily the uh, amount of uh, recuperation and valorisation. I'm sorry, I have trouble with these, uh, the translation of our, these waste management uh, words, but um, it's, uh, and I know there's another page and I'm trying to find it. I'm not going to find it because I, I think it's uh, searching for it. It's going to take too much time, but this is Action Reduction. You come into the store and you can see which level they're at. It's within the windows. You can identify, it says, okay, this is, this is very good to lower and the communication is within the stores. And we keep a track, a very direct tracking of all the waste produced within the store. So you can definitely, um, you know, you know, these, the value or the data that we're bringing to you is a strong data. And then what I'm working on, because this is something uh definitely this is something of another scale for our organization and i and i think this is kind of the main topic of our conference and i hopefully if you have question but if you have question on any other topic it's about our newest program that is called the eco charge so for now the eco charge is powered by the fond eco igr which is a program that we do with grocery stores, and you may know that grocery stores, it's a label that is still present in the US, it's Independent Grocery Association, and it's a very strong um, network of grocers in uh, grocery stores in, Canada, in Quebec. It's operated by Sobeys that owns stores across Canada, but the, the particularity of these IGA stores is that they're owned by franchisee, like independent uh, owners. And these owners of IGAs have poured a million dollars for per year for the last 12 years. And this is a main supporter of Earth Day Canada at large. But on the, trend, on the 10th anniversary of the Fonds eco we've developed a program that shifted from um, the waste management and the, all the good things we're doing with the Fonds eco and looking into the future and trying to establish, and not just trying now, it was kind of, I'm talking like if, if we were like in 2018, but now, in 2021, we are building a network, a charging station network that is, and I'm sorry, I'm going to cough. <coughs> and I didn't bring any water, but I'm going to live through this. So we are building, we are in the midst of, in the, in the middle of building. We have already 10 sites out of these 50 sites of char of fast charging of a fast charging network, um, and we have two in New Brunswick, um, and we're planning from from here to twenty twenty five to have more than six hundred station across Canada of these charging station. So, this is a project of more than 
14 million, actually it's 14 million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This is going to reduce the uh, green gas emission from transportation, which is the main um, emitter, even in the US as in Canada. It, it, is, it represents more than 50% of the emission, the transportation sector. So, and it, it's going to allow to have more than 10,000 cars, electric cars within the network, and it's going to reduce the greenhouse gas emission over a 10 year period of 100,000 uh, 100, tons of CO2. And in the vision of this, these charging station, and we can open the discussion on this, there's a vision that it's not only the charging station that is um, important, of course, it's it, you know, to provide electricity to, uh, for a long distance, because this allows you to charge your car to gain 200 to 300, let's say we're going to do it from 160 miles to 200 miles in the time that you go into the grocery store. So if you own an electric car, you're going to the grocery store, the time you're at the grocery store, you're going to gain 160 to 200 miles of autonomy. So that is kind of a, so this is efficiency. So it's kind of a, you're not going to wait. You're going to be at the store. You're going to come out of the store and you can go to your cottage. Even if the cottage is from, is three hours from your home. And, and, and within this vision, we're adding more services around these charging stations, not just seeing them as a utility to charge your car, but an opportunity to bring services that is going to reinvent the last. And again, if you're in a densified, it could be the last half a mile to the last five miles, because the legwork on the last five mile is the one that creates the more stress within the mobility so that's why you know they you know what's happening now because of covid we have everything delivered to our house now uh, it's a door to door so the stress within the mobility of having to deliver these items to individual houses can be lesser if we could use these charging stations have boxes where you could pick up your delivery instead of having deliveries to all the doors. So it's a way, it's not just a way to deliver electricity to cars, but it's a way for us to reinvent mobility. On the last note to my presentation about this, I, if you are in, uh, youth, because I wanted to, I'm always, I want to bring some uh, relevancy within our, your lives at this moment, you know, just talking about our day in Canada, it's nice, I, I'm delighted to, uh, to do this with you, but if you want, if you're interested in mobility, there's a nice event in the U.S. that you can go to, then this is happening this weekend, and it's drive electric. It's the National Drive Electric Week, and you have all these partners that are getting together to uh, offer you test drives or all the information. So it's kind of driveelectricweek.org, and you could put your zip code, and they're going to tell you where you could try an EV. Uh, and so you could uh, move your mobility to zero emission mobility. So I don't know if I made much sense because when you talk, you know, kind of a, uh, uh, you talk from Montreal to Florida, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a first for me. I, like I said, I love it, but I want to know, I would like to know if you have any questions, 
because I have, I'm sure, many answers for you. All right. Thank you. Um, as everybody is going to be collecting their thoughts and asking questions, I just, I always lead it off because I, you know, uh, I don't know if anybody else on here has an electrical, has an electric vehicle, but I know we just got a Tesla a few months back and um, American made. And, you know, we're going to have people talking about um, their, the first solar car and it's based out of San Diego. What is Canada bringing besides your electric charging um, network? Do you have companies that are um, developing these electric vehicles for the Canadians? Yes, I can show you something else of a program that we're doing. Let me go back to my little thing and every day and it's going to <laughs> this and I'm going to go back to this and here it is. So in Canada, um, we're, I mean, there's a, there's a, so in Canada, in terms of new cars, there's no new cars, no Canadian manufacturer. I don't think we have any Canadian manufacturers to start with mm -hmm. as automobile. We do have a um, bus con uh, constructor. It's called Lyon Electric and can, can show it to you. So they specialize in school buses. And this is kind of a, we build school, zero emission school buses We'll build also zero emission heavy trucks. And I can, I'll do that. I'll do that plus Lyon Electric, okay? So you can see it, Lyon Electric. Uh -huh. The Lion Electric. So you can see, I'll put it in English because I'm sure they have it in English. So you see, this is a heavy truck. It's still not a fret liner. You see this fret liner, but I hopefully they're going to, it's, it's going to, this is the kind of truck they have. Okay, here it is. Learn more, the all electric urban truck. And this is the kind of truck you're going to have. Heavy duty, 400 kilometers of, a, so about 300 miles of autonomy. And uh, this is um, getting out of, um, the plant and it's been um, tested and homologué. This is the only French word. So it's, get, it's going to get out of the, the, they have produced about 10 of them. Three of them are being tested to be homologué, which I don't know uh, what it's to be on the streets to, 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 the, to the government. As long as, as soon as it is going to be regulated to be on the Canadian streets is going to be available to the US. So as I said, this is one of their trucks and they are building also a some buses, urban buses, but most of them, they're being built like the electrical school bus. And this is something that is kind of a, it's very, it's great. And this is where you see Canadians are going to try. On our side, we are we have a subsidy to uh, to, to 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 develop fifty uh, lightweight truck because this is where we this is our aim. We're looking on electrification of transportation, charging station, and lightweight truck. But since we don't have any lightweight truck, um, we do. Uh, we've, we work with a, a young company in, in, in Montreal and there is more and more of these kind of, uh, I, I call them like these hacker of, uh, of, uh, of cars. So they transform these, as you can see, this is a Jumango expedition 2012. And now it's moved to- them. Is that right? They convert them into uh, electric vehicles. Exactly, in zero emission vehicles. And I'm just, so you can see the car here and we've asked the uh, known, a known, a known, a known uh, contemporary artist to uh, create a design out of this. So um, 
and I was just on the phone with a Chinese company that is looking to uh, looking to to export lightweight trucks. As we've met with GM, we've talked to Ford and most of their production because they're going to start production of the a pickup truck from Ford, a yeah. transit uh, lightweight truck from Ford, a pickup truck from GM, a light a totally new like it's, it's kind of something box out of GM. All of these trucks are so in demand. Even with Stellantis, that is kind of, you know, the Stellantis, all of these uh, producer, producer or builders, constructors are not able to, to provide any trucks because there's so much demand for them. They have, uh, they, orders are exceeding their production by the thousands. So, so for now... Work? Yeah. yeah, so uh, we have the, you know, every, I don't know if ever, anybody here has seen that Ford the electric vehicle, but I'm like, oh my God, I'm ready to toss my Tesla and get this, this Ford that can like be a generator and power our house in case, you know, a hurricane comes by. So, so I guess there's the twofold question why people, you know, everybody just raise their hand, interrupt me, but um, what percentage, so who has the advantage? I mean, what percentage of cars in Canada are electric versus, you know, America, but, you know, we have Ford. I mean, I know that, um, you know, the Ford trucks, and we know about the um, the ordering of them. They're on back order. How are they working between the United States and Canada? I mean, is it first come, first serve? Who's on the list? But um, that is so huge is that it's not just the Americans that are wanting to get these electronic vehicles. You know, Tesla, we have people that have um, wanted to get the, the truck, the, um, the, the Tesla light, truck. The lightning truck. Yeah, I've you ordered know, and, one myself. Oh, you so, did? So I have some people did. that put $300 aside and ordered three of those Tesla trucks. And the, the guy from Tesla says he hasn't even begun to like manufacture them. I mean, that is, and then we're we're going to talk about the solar cars, and there's, they are rolling, you know, thirty two thousand plus, a, um, of solar cars out there. I mean, is it, are they ever going to be able to catch up? I mean, how does it relate between Canada and the states? Look, so you know, we have a a goal of a zero emission. Uh, in Canada, we've set our goal. Like most of the most most of the European nations, have set their goals of zero. I mean, one hundred percent sales of zero emission uh, vehicles by twenty thirty five. Wow! So the transition is in twenty. You know, as in car years, it's it's tomorrow. So the shift is going to. We can't wait to have to be able to have uh, inventory. The problem right now is. We lack inventory for two reasons. First is the chip shortage, as we see in all cars, but also in the battery production that is so limited. So now we have, as you, you may know, Tesla is sold out uh, for 2021. So they've sold all their car they could produce till 2021. And, you know, these this is a company that has been working up and people not believing that they would sell the amount of car that they would sell. And now it's just kind of, they could sell more, but they don't have the production facility. So it's kind of a, it's a reverse. So we are, we're going to face a, 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 a humongous demand because of course, let's say in a truck, a, a electric Ford 150 is a better truck than a, elect, there's a combustion engine 150 because the torque you're going to get out of an, uh, out of your pickup can move your house as it's so it's just it's a better truck and then the anxiety of charging your your, your car is going to lessen because it's just a way of how you're going to work you, you're not in your car all the time and you're not moving and when you're a traffic jam, you don't consume your electricity. 
you know, and there's something else. And so the apprenticeship of uh, the usage of electric car is going to lessen the anxiety that thermal user of car have. So it's going to be, the more you're going to have, the more demand you're going to have because these are better vehicle. And it makes sense, just kind of a, it, it, it just, when you, when you drive an electric car, you understand that this is kind of a, it's a more direct, it's, it's, it's a more direct sensation to the road. And it's kind of a, this is kind of, and that's just the driving part of it. Then the charging part of it, the consumption, the emission, and the, and the price also. Already, even if I, you know, with subsidies in Canada, an electric car is, is cheaper than a thermal car if you account in the next 10 year, the amount of gasoline you're not going to put in. But the fact that you are, you know, we go, we, we, we manage our budget on a, you know, on a monthly, even on a weekly um, timing, it's tough to understand that, okay, on a 10 year, even if I pay my car, it's seven, you know, my car is $60,000 instead of 30,000 or 50 in, turn, instead of 20, I'm going to save money because the amount of gasoline I'm not going to put in is going to be lesser on a 10 year. But we are close to getting cars cheaper at the, at the price with subsidies, but Volkswagen and Tesla are on a race. And this is what we want to see. We want to see constructors that are, can produce a mount of vehicle that have access to batteries and chip that can compete with each other. So we can have a, a, a car that is going to be cheaper at the start to buy and be electric. I have a question. You're talking about production and there are so many facets of it. You have materials and the availability of materials. You have to have the factories, but you have to have the workers who are educated in that field. And right now, I don't know if the United States or Canada have that large pool of people who have been trained to go and produce that particular type of car or vehicle. You see, there's a lot of production that has moved in. There's a revival of Detroit that a uh, Rivian is in Illinois. You know, this Rivian is a new pickup. You know, it's a new, they have cars are coming out, but their, their um, strategy was to build, is to build a pickup before their cars. So it's kind of a, I think it's a nice strategy. They're based in Illinois. They have the factories there. You have Tesla that has been building a mega factory out of Texas. They are already producing a huge amount of cars in, in California. You have Ford that is producing the Mustang E out of Texas, I think. So this is kind of a, I think there's a shift. I, I think in terms of the knowledge, and I'm going to say something, I mean, say, maybe a sad thing about cars, electric cars, electric cars, you, you don't have much parts in electric car. I think, and, I, and this is where I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a generalist, but let's say you have, I think you have like 10,000 parts in a, in a thermal car <coughs> and you have about a hundred parts. In so you don't electric. have need much talent to uh, build these cars, you know. You need less talent to. Breathe. Unfortunately, I would say you need much less talent to build these cars because you have less parts to kind of get together. But as an owner of the car, there is no. You don't need to change all. You don't need. It's a. It's a. It's a much more lasting um, vehicle. But again, I mean, I don't know if I, I, I hear it's the same in the US. We have such a shortage of worker in all the sphere. And, you know, in Canada, it's just kind of a, and it's in other day Canada, we have been targeted. So people are stealing our employees. We have, 
people that are just tagging everybody on our Facebook, but well, not Facebook, but uh, on our LinkedIn. And they send, you know, it's, it's all of their people in waste, ma- especially in waste management. It's like everybody's kind of, because we're renowned now, now it's just, this is kind of, so we're, it's, it's a situation where you would see up north where we have mining and we, it's very far. So people don't go there. Now it's generalized in healthcare and everything. So maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing, but uh, I think the knowledge of uh, the workforce, again, it's, this is going to be how we're going to be able to produce these for me. I think the most, you know, because chips, I think it's a, it's a conjuncture of, of event that we get to be assertive of chip. It's not that we cannot produce, um, you know, an amount of chips of computer parts that, you know, it, we're going to get there. At some point, we're going to produce these amount of chips. It's not a, it's a, like we're missing silicones or something. But batteries are going to be something else. The amount of batteries that we will need to produce and uh, the amount of mining we're going to do and how responsible the mining is going to be and how what we're going to do with the batteries at the end of life is going to be the issue. I think this is kind of a key issue at electric cars. Does anybody else have a question by all means? Um, but Mrs. Greenberger, you usually have questions for us. <laughs> but um, So I, I have you know, a question yeah. though. And that presupposes if people start buying the electric cars, um, they're going to need charging. Now, they can charge their cars in their private homes if they, you know, in their, in their private home and pay for it. Um, and in condos, um, people can build their own or have installed their own charger so that it goes to their electrical bill. But what about, you know, um, charging stations throughout the United States? Do different, I mean, all the gas stations along the internet of the interstate, do they have charging stations? I haven't noticed them. So people yeah. driving 95 or up 75 or across countries with 66. I mean, that's a lot of miles to cover and you have to have a charging station. If there is a, there is a good website, there's a couple of them, okay? You, there is, um, I would drive you to Charge Hub. And I can pull it. everything, Mrs. Cavanaugh. My Tesla actually, when we we went from here across to West Fort to the West Coast of Florida up towards Tampa, and yeah, like um, Pierre was saying that there's a lot of sites and there's an app on your car that actually plans out your stops. And I will have to tell you that from here to the West Coast of Florida. There was only one stop on the middle of, um, is that, is it Alligator Alley? Alligator or, Alley. Right? There was one stop. So we literally had to stop, but there was like 12 supercharging stations. And then you got, that was like in the middle of 75. And then we could charge over Naples, Tampa. But um, so yeah, there's not as many. We're, I'm planning a trip up to, um, we're planning a trip to um, Alabama. And we're it's, and we're trying to figure out which route to go. So as Pierre is showing, you know, you have supercharging stations and then you have slower charging stations. It's weird, but yeah, in the middle of the state to cut over, it's you're limited. You know, as you've seen when you go when you drive, there's not any gas stations, and um, so, but. It's amazing that, you know, we can go in our Tesla, we have extended miles, we can go, we have to stop pretty much, and I have to say this, we stop pretty much almost every two, we'll probably stop every two to three hours to charge up, but we need about like a 20 minute charge. So yeah, it's, but we don't pay for gas. It's like five, not even $5 for us to charge. So the inconvenience of us taking 20 minutes out of our drive to be able to to use the electronic um, the electric vehicle and go to these stations, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm looking and, at the map there, and you see there are plenty in Florida, but 
Oh, man. Alleg- you you spread yes. it out. And trust me, if you look at Alligator Alley or what at 75 in Florida, there's only one in the middle. Trust me. Right. It is, <laughs> and it's because it's it's not loading. And all these yellow here, these yellow dots, they're all fast charging station. So that means exactly like Tammy said, you take a you take a coffee and it's just kind of a it's a different experience. It's just kind of it's funny because I don't think overall it's you're kind of a you're just more relaxed. Okay? Yeah, you because you just can I ask you a question. Yes. Can, can I ask a question? Absolutely, Mrs. Shapira. All right. Um all of these uh, electric charging stations are using electricity generated in an electric plant somewhere. Now that plant is generating electricity usually using fossil fuels, isn't it? Listen, this is a very good question. All our charging station at the Rechargeco is using renewable energy. All as Tammy, when Tammy goes to the Tesla charging station, it's all renewable. So most of these charging stations, and you have to be aware of what you consume, but you have a choice now to choose from a charging station that is going to make sure that you have energy from a renewable source. So this is very interesting because of course, and because of course you want to do the best out of this. You want to, you, you want to be, because you are an electric driver and you want to tackle the zero emission goal you're going to do to renewable. But I must tell you that has been the survey, even if you use a charging station that is powered by a coal plant that is going to produce energy by a coal plant, it's still going to reduce your emission by 30% that if you own a car. But, but again, you, we don't want you to go on a charging station that is powered by a coal station. But if you have, because you're in the middle of the desert and that's the only one, <laughs> You're right. still going to be, uh, you're going, to, you're still going to be doing good for the environment. That is awesome. Absolutely. That is neat. Uh, that is that is something that if it's good for me, I'm so happy. You know that that is happening out there. Um, does anybody here on this um, call, beside myself, have a uh, electric vehicle? Is anybody planning on getting one? No. One of my concerns had always been whether, you know, if we could drive to Florida and, and have to worry about charging and, you know, so. But I, you know, we do it when you get it, or even you can do it, like Pierre said, you don't even need to have electric vehicle. You can still plan your trips that you want to make and you can have it programmed like the electric, you know, um, the stations. You can see, you know, before we bought, we figured out like where are they, where all the stations are, because trust me, we all know that getting out of Florida, that's that's a five hour drive just alone, just to get to Jacksonville. And I know when my boyfriend and I, we went to Jacksonville, we, we had to stop twice, you know, but there was plenty enough for us to get out and to Jacksonville. We only, I think, we only extended our ride probably about, four, and again, it's 45 minutes. You know, you are going, it took us like six hours to, you know, it all, your ride are going to, your, the ride is going to extend, but you can plan ahead. You can see exactly how many charging stations are open. Mrs. Greenberger, you know, you can say, hey, there's 12 charging stations at this gas station and six of them are empty. It is that amazing that you can see um, how many are being used, how many are um, not. And it's, some of them are free. When you go to certain places, restaurants, and you plug in behind the restaurant, you get free parking and you get free charging. Huh. That's cool. I think, I think cool. 
I think when I miss Greenberg also is kind of if you if you are interested and you want to you want to make sure that you're that is it's for you. There's two things to do, you know. Uh, this is kind of a find a, a dealer that is going to show you how to use a fast charging station because we've and it's funny because most of the dealers that are in, that are going to sell you a car, they've never plugged a electric car to a fast charging station. Okay, and this is kind of that's how you're going to that's how you the anxiety of long distance is going to, you're going to uh, feel much more comfortable when you're going to see that there is a fast charging station and it's easy to use and you can plug it and you know how it is. And also, we have a charging station less than a mile away from us at Glen Eagles, by the way, over at the Delray Market Center where the Publix is, they have probably about 15 or 20 supercharging stations. So, and we're, that i mean yes and you know what i have a tesla and it's that charging weekend that pierre told us about if anybody wants to drive in my tesla i will be around on sunday we can be like tammy call <laughs> call me up text me everybody has my number and i'll take you for a spin and i can show you how we charge it and you are going to be in love with the the electric vehicle how's that mr pierre <laughs> it's great and miss green madam greenberg we also before and we just talked to yonday and i think they're going to implement this because they have amazing car uh, kind of coming out of yonday and it's and and if it's it's an electric vehicle it's not a thermal vehicle that has been transform into an electric vehicle these these it's important because this this is most of these cars outside of tesla and outside outside of id there's a, a volkswagen is coming with a new car you may are going to hear about it it's called they have id and number four or five or whatever these are cars that are designed by only by to be electric they're going to, Hyundai is going to allow you to rent a car for a week to test it. And I suggest you do that. You rent a car for many days, an electric car, you drive around, you try, you plan to go somewhere, you know, at 300, 400 kilometer miles, and you rent it. And then Yandy, what is they're going to do is they're going to rent it to you for a week, and they're then going to deduct if you buy the car, they're going to deduct the price of the rental if you buy it. But in any case, just rent an electric car, drive around, and I'm sure you're going to see what I mean about this is a better car. It's a better experience. It's a better. It's a. You'll see this. And um, maybe it's not for you also, and it's not a, you know, we're not, it's not a forced sale or anything, but it's not just, I don't think it's appropriate now to have a car or says, I'm going to test drive a car, like something is organized. And of course, we're doing this at every day. We want people to test drive, but it's important to test drive over a two, three day period on a longer, it's not just, it's not a, you need to be more, you need a more uh, longer experience to feel comfortable with it. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, I really enjoy this. Oh, by the way, I only tested the Tesla once for 20 minutes and that was all I got. <laughs> so Pierre, but, I understand. What yeah, I always say, you know, you have these flip phone and then you have the iPhone, it's like a, you have a car, you have a thermal car, and then you have a, a Tesla because Tesla is kind of a, it's just a, yeah. it's, I, I can't I wait think, for the $25,000 Tesla. <laughs> Don't, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a great, expensive. I think it's a great idea for everybody to test an, an electric vehicle. And uh, yes, this is Greenberger. Well, I, I drive a uh, Volvo and I understand in the next year or so, that's all they're going to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how that they're not going to give you an option. And they have pretty good uh, zero emission electric cars already. Involved. Do they? Yes, they do. And they're, they, if you want to, uh, they, they're, they're making their new car. And you may might want to do notice there's a Polestar, P-O-L-S-T-A-R. 
-hmm. and it's made out of the same plant. You know that Volvo is now owned by a Chinese company. I, mean, I don't know if you knew this. I but did it's not. Owned. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're sharing their um, they're sharing their uh, um, line. Like I said, this is kind of a this is electric line because let's say like Kia, the Kona from Kia. Okay, do you have Kona from Kia? They have a thermal. It's on the line. They're doing a thermal Kia, and then they stop the line, and they're doing an electric Kia out of the same line. These lines with the Polestar and Volvo, they're they can they couldn't produce a thermal car. They are doing, but in order to produce uh, their vehicle, they can they 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 don't have any enough demand to produce uh, only electric cars. So they they do a. Uh, half and half, they do Polestars and uh, Volvo. But very good, uh, I've heard review, everybody's raving. Again, it's a question, if you have a Volvo, it's gonna be in the same range of price, but for that range of price, this is the best vehicle, electric vehicle that you're going to get in the Volvo that is coming out. Thank you. Does, does Toyota have um, any plans to go electric? Unfortunately, not, Madame Cavana. And it's very sad because Toyota is, uh, was a leader in a hybrid vehicle. And we, nobody can make sense out of this. Uh, they haven't planned. They've bet all their beads. They put all their beads on, on building a, a uh, comment ça s'appelle? Uh, a hydrogen car, hydrogen, oh, yeah. and this is kind of a, and and there, let's say we're in, unfortunately. I used to love Toyota. I had Toyotas. I'm you know I'm a true believer in Toyota, but unfortunately, they're even on the dark side now, trying to you know kind of a stop the. Uh, there was a there was if you Google Toyota the. The president of Toyota in Japan kind of warned that um, they're going to lose millions of jobs in 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 Japan if it was to be imposed to be electric. So it's sad to see this, um, but I I know that they are working and and it's, this is being made by Stellantis, but there's a Toyota truck that is going to be zero emission coming up. But it's still not the core Toyota that is working on this, unfortunately. Too bad, because we love Toyota. I, I do, I, I do too. I do too. It is weird because when we were looking at electric vehicles or hybrids, I mean, I wanted a Toyota, like the Toyota RAV4s are <laughs> and the Priuses. That's why I was like, yeah, yeah. And I thought I read that Toyota was going to do an electric car, but that is super sad that they are not able to do it. Yeah, and on top of this, they don't want to do it. It's for some reason, and we don't understand. Nobody understands, and everybody is uh, a good website. Is that you want to do that? You maybe want to know about the news of electric vehicle. The best site is Electric, and let me try to Electric something like this. I'm sorry, I'm typing it. Uh, no, but just two electric EV. Tesla news, yes, that's it. Let me share it with you here I'm on my screen. And this is um, the best place to get your news. They have a uh, uh, everyday newsletter that they will send to you. You just go there. It's called E-L-E-C-T-R-E-K. And you get on their newsletter yep. and you are going to know it all we're actually going to be talking about that site when we talk about our um, i just put it in the chat when we talk about the um the solar car from aptera i wish pierre i'm going to invite you to like come on to that one so yeah i just put the link in it but it is an amazing site but yes um aptera who we're going to be talking to from um san diego they're going to talk about their 1000 mile range solar electric vehicle so Pierre, that would be something that you know. I there's I might just go ahead and put some money and put my deposit down now to get one of those. 
and Madame Greenberg, look, they have the you you can you can see the information about the Volvo also all of this and uh, yeah, the electric Volvo will come centered with Lida and they're 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 doing it. Volvo is definitely moving on to it. They'll be a key player in the electrification of transportation. That's for sure. It's a it's a great website. It really is. Thank you. Well, this is um even a bonus for us. I didn't know we would talk so much about electric vehicles. I wish you know. Um, this is awesome. I, I wish we had more people because this is going to be the future. And right, Pierre. And I wonder if there's going to be like, um, like a panic buying, you know, that people all of a sudden are going to be like, oh, let me go buy our, our electric vehicle now or, you know, or buy extra batteries or hoard things. I wonder what's going to happen with that. I think this is kind of a, I think it's at some point I can see that 23, 24, you'll have, you know, you'll have stocks right now. We don't have stocks and this is kind of a, you know, we don't have, we, like I said, you know, we don't have cars. We, uh, if you buy your Mustang, this is the same thing. We get to have better cars every month. So like the Volvo is guy is coming like the like the Mustang is a beautiful the E Mustang is a beautiful car so we have more cars we need stocks we need trucks we need lightweight trucks we need the GMC we need the Bronco we need the F150 electric it's going to come in 22 i think it's going to stabilize in 24 and as soon as we get stocks, I think we're going to see price going down. And then maybe we're going to see a greater shift. And this is where charging station for us is going to be a key issue. This is why we're, we want to, you know, we're for us, we, we want to build stations as much as we can. We want to be uh, expanding very fast, small, small charging station instead of huge amount of charging station because we live it we we develop uh, on these 50 sites that i show you we work with tesla on 19 of these sites so we're building tesla supercharger and our sites and um it's a huge infrastructure electric infrastructure these tesla they're kind of a you could not it's kind of probably powered i don't know i don't know your place but you have many how many condos you have there like or thousand, houses at the, at 1, the uh, 1084. 1084. So one Tesla station is probably more electricity than all your all the all the houses that you have at uh, at Glendale's at Glen Eagles. Sorry. So it's it's these stations are these Tesla stations are so humongous. So we want to keep away from that. We want to build small stations that are going to charge you fast, but are not going to you know kind of are not going to be kind of the uh, Eiffel Tower uh, of electricity to be you know every that to build also. So and because you are we are going to need many of these stations also at some point. I think this is kind of hopefully, but also I think it's an opportunity also to rethink about our mobility at the same time. So do we need one? Do we need, do we need two cars per household? Do we need to, how can we densify the uh, amount of uh, people uh, that we have in one car? How can we, uh, do we need to, can we share our car? Can we, so this is kind of a, a vision that we are, I think it's, to use this for us, for me as an environmentalist, it's also kind of between that shift to move it to uh, to rethink. It's an opportunity to rethink mobility at the same time. Thank you, everybody. Is that good? I know I talked a lot more than I wanted and asked questions, but yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. But did everybody get their questions in? Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Pierre. And yeah, yeah, Pierre, I'll send you the link so you can listen in. Um, I think it's October 7th. Uh, we have Aptera. They're going to come and talk about their their solar car. And um, that's going to that's they're already rolling off the shelves. And that's going to be something else. You know, who needs a charging station when we have all the Florida sunshine and uh, they are rolling them off and they're affordable. They're twenty five thousand dollars. But you know, it's a little spacecraft vehicle. I don't know, Pierre, if you know about some of those, but uh, everybody, so let's pass the word around. 
um, about October 7th. And, um, you know, the Eagle's out. We all have virtual lectures in October. So hopefully you'll join us. We have some great programs. And uh, everybody stay safe. And thank you, Pierre, so much for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, I loved your French accent. <laughs> uh, anytime. Um, anytime. <laughs>